Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Prime Comments. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance, the everything here at Nintendo Prime. And let's just hop right into what you guys had to say this week. Uh, untempered link on our Breath of the Wild trailer analysis, which by the way, that video was created by Mr. Daniel from NACHG Films. Uh, he creates videos for our channel once in a great mile, about every other month or so. Um, Untempered Link had this to say, Trying to find that iconic shot of Hyrule Field from the original reveal was one of the first things I looked for after exiting the Great Plateau. Like the video said, it is a shame it was changed because I had that image cemented into my brain after having it as my wallpaper for years. But the main game was so good, I wasn't disappointed for long. And I agree, I wasn't disappointed for long either with the game. Uh, that iconic shot, it sucks it doesn't actually exist in the game just for um, how long we sat with that image in our brains. It was a good two and a half years, uh, or even full two years, just sitting there as the primary image for what Breath of the Wild ultimately was. And while aspects of that are obviously there, Death Mountain's still in there, some of the peaks and stuff, we found that out in the analysis. Uh, we can't get an exact location shot anymore because, well, that exact location has been overtaken by different types of terrain and doesn't really exist in that perfect shot. Things were moved around, which is expected in development. Uh, I wish that iconic shot was available in the game, and it almost makes me wish Nintendo didn't give us an iconic shot <laughs> in the first place. Um, but either way... Breath of the Wild obviously turned out to still be excellent, and right now it's currently my number one favorite game of all time. So thank you for your comment. GameStop restocked Nintendo Switches this past week, all at the exact same time. I think every store had at least five units out of like 4,400 stores. And it wasn't just GameStops, Toys R Us and Best Buy and Walmart and pretty much every major retail location that carries Switches uh, got stock in this past week and got significant stock. Uh, and Philip Stafford had this to say on that video. Frankly, I think scumbag GameStop had these all along, and Nintendo told them to stop their horse crap. Uh, and it's been proven lately that GameStop has been holding back on selling Switches and NES Classics. And it's publicly been shown like it was made Nintendo RAM their boot up uh, GameStop's bootays. Uh, and then he went on to say, because I replied to him and essentially said, well, Nintendo can't really make GameStop do anything uh, once they are sold their units. Uh, that's that's really it. Nintendo just cares about the sell-through. And Philip Stefan wanted to say, Nintendo Prime, did you not even read? It doesn't effing matter if Nintendo sold a billion Switches to retailers and were paid for such. Selling hardware is never about making money off the hardware itself, although Nintendo does make some. It's not about that. It's about getting as many systems in people's homes in order to sell software. I don't know if Nintendo jammed their foot up scumbag GameStop's booty or not, but make no mistake, it's in Nintendo's best interest to do so. If you don't think GameStop holding back stock isn't damaging to the industry, and especially Nintendo, you should really shut your channel down, because you don't know jack about the gaming industry. There's a reason ship numbers aren't all that important, it's sold units that matter. Now, a lot of anger there. I understand uh, that obviously for us as consumers, the ship numbers matter. Uh, for software creators, the ship numbers matters. And Nintendo's a software creator, so obviously the ship numbers matter as much as the sales numbers matter. It, one thing we have to get, think about here, and some of your comments are actually factually incorrect. You know, you say uh, it's never about making money off the hardware. If you actually look at Nintendo's financial reports over the past 20 years, you'll see that outside of a brief period with the 3DS and Wii U, Nintendo has always made money on their hardware. In fact, they have made significant money on their hardware. So while PlayStation might sell for a loss or at cost, or Xbox might sell for a loss or X co at cost, that's not really what Nintendo does. Nintendo sells for profit. So it's not just about you know getting software sales for Nintendo. Hardware sales make up a huge percentage of their net income every single year. And it's the number one reason when people talk about how Nintendo should get out of the games industry and they should become 
third party, multi platform, they're forgetting the large chunk of revenue that Nintendo gets from hardware as it is. And that doesn't even get into the royalty fees that third parties and indie companies uh, that Nintendo makes money off of the sales of their games as well, not just the sales of their own games. Now, shipped does matter. Does it matter as much as sold through? No. But it matters because regardless of GameStop holding back stock, which I think all of us think is scummy and bad for the industry, and they do this with everything, so whatever. And I don't think they held back stock for this restock, per se. They hold back stock, you know, 100, 200, 500 units, or whatever the case may be, so they can continue to sell their expensive bundles and keep those always in stock online. Uh, this restock wasn't about holding back stock because all retailers got a bunch, unless there's like this big global um, conspiracy that... Every single retailer needed to hold back stock so they could all have stock at once. Chances are Nintendo just got a lot more units out there to fulfill their orders. Sold through matters because that's obviously the total sales number of the unit. But the shipped unit matters as well because while it's true shipping units doesn't mean those units sold through, N the Nintendo Switch has been selling out. So retailers have been consistently ordering more units and paying for them and prepaying for them and getting units shipped to them. It's a good sign when units are being shipped because Nintendo is making money off the retailers already because they prepay up front for the units. And the demand is still there for Nintendo to continue to ship units. So while we don't always get exact sales figures, updates very often sold through because even Nintendo might not be aware of if GameStop sold through all their stock, if Walmart sold through all their stock. All Nintendo knows is that those retailers keep ordering shipments from them. And it's not just in the United States, it's worldwide. So if retailers are continuing to order shipments and Nintendo's continuing to have to ship more and more out and they aren't able to fulfill the orders, right? That's been really the issue uh, when we talk about stock shortages with Switch is Nintendo hasn't been able to fulfill the orders. They, they order these units thinking they could sell, Nintendo can't fulfill the order, people can't buy it on shelves, etc. So Nintendo's catching up with the orders. So shipped units does matter. Not as much as sold through, but it does matter to Nintendo's bottom line. Because as long as you know companies are continuing to want Nintendo to ship more units, Nintendo's going to make more money. If that makes sense on the business side of things. So yes, Nintendo does make money on the unit shipped. And yes, it is up to the retailers to decide how they would like to distribute those units. And you could say that's right or wrong, but they're also taking the risk of prepaying for units that they don't know are going to sell. So I think what GameStop did is scummy. I think it might be a little scummy that Amazon potentially held back Switch stock for their uh, trucks that were traveling around the United States and having NES Classic units available and Switch units available. But ultimately, because they took the risk in prepaying for the units... Uh, and, you know, the risk for them is that they buy a unit, it doesn't sell, they have to discount it later, and they lose money on that unit. It's almost understandable that retailers are going to do what they feel like they need to do to maximize the profits of the systems they already paid for, as scummy as that might be. Uh, and obviously, Nintendo is part of that problem in that they weren't able to fulfill the full orders for the Switch, causing a shortage. So now that the orders are starting to be fulfilled and we're seeing more and more Switch units out there, I mean, it is Sunday right now and I literally was at GameStop just last night on a Saturday and I saw Switch units in stock. So they have more and more Switches out there. They're catching up to the demand and this is ultimately good for everything. As for shutting my channel down, um, you know, I don't know how much GameStop holding back stock is damaging to the whole industry. Uh, as I said, it's more so Nintendo just needs to fulfill the orders. But yeah, ship numbers are important. Nintendo does make a profit. Gotta remember, Nintendo does not operate like like Sony and Xbox do. They make huge profit margins off their systems. Always have outside of the past generation, and probably always will because Nintendo doesn't believe in selling systems for a loss to get an install base, um, and they shouldn't because this is like their biggest revenue. Anyways. Moving on to the next thing, we had a leak from the MPD that showed the Nintendo Switch was on top, and when the MPD came out, it confirmed the Nintendo Switch was on top, uh, and that Splatoon 2 was the number one selling game of last month, even outselling uh, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy for the PlayStation 4. And OV Warrior had this to say, Nintendo should, over the course of a few years, figure out a way to get all or at least most of the 3DS games to work on the Switch. 
to that I say, I, I think that's a nice idea. I don't think it's realistic. And I don't think it's realistic because... 3DS game cartridges don't work natively on the Switch. So no matter how much they modify and update, the only way to be able to get those 3DS games to work on the Switch uh, without releasing like collection packs would be digital downloads. And the Switch only has 32 gigs of internal memory. I know it's completely expandable, but now you're going to tell people, hey, you can have your full 3DS backwards compa uh, compatibility, but you have to rebuy all the games digitally, and then you have to buy an SD card. And it's just kind of a mess I don't think Nintendo is going to deal with. Uh, I don't think the switch is ever going to be backwards compatible with 3ds games i think it's more likely like five six years down the road for a switch 2 to have uh some sort of virtual console version of 3ds games um but yeah both platforms are still selling and nintendo's not going to make 3ds games work with switch i think it's a cool idea i just don't think it's a, an approach nintendo is willing to take anytime soon i'm uh, moving on there was a new arms character announced this, this week and teo exe uh, went on to retranslate the tweet that I quoted. I used Google Translate at the time. Uh, this person apparently knows some native Japanese. Uh, so I got the quotes up on the screen. I'm going to read them off. It says, President, I recorded a fighter who's been the talk of the town lately during summer vacation. It looks like she slash he has his or her own costume and arms. I couldn't really tell, but it looked like he slash she slash he had some sort of fighting style in which he slash she could change his or her body. Ah, and she slash he broke one of the cameras. Should I write it up? And I'll write up an explanation. Yes. And then they went on to say, you know, if I need some translation analysis help with things related to Japanese, you know, the help. Um, and I gave them my contact email, and I believe they did actually contact me. I haven't gotten back to you yet, Teo. I'm, I apologize. Been very busy, but when I do have some Japanese work, I will certainly try to get you involved as quickly as I can so I don't have to delay my videos. Uh, but thank you for that translation. And that's really all I can say right now is uh, thank you. Because I don't readily have a translator available all the time, and it's good to have that information correct. It doesn't vary too much from what I said, but it adds some additional context. Uh, so yeah, thanks. I, I love I love when we get comments like that. Uh, this past week, we recorded and produced Prime Family Episode 1, which included my 6-year-old daughter playing Splatoon 2 for the first time, and also my 4-year-old son watching us. Uh, and, oh man, who picked out this comment? So, uh, Muhair... Elois had this to say, you're fat. I'm fat. I, I don't deny it. I'm, I'm not pretending that I'm losing weight that I'm not losing. I'm not pretending that I am the most in shape guy in the world. Uh, I'm a hell of a lot more athletic than I appear. Let's put it that way. And I don't know how long I'm going to keep that athleticism, especially at my current weight. Uh, but yeah, I am fat. I don't think anyone should be proud of the fact they're fat. And these comments don't bother me so much because I've accepted who I am. Uh, I am trying to do some things on the side to work on it. It's hard. Uh, and I make no excuses. Yes, I have three kids and I have all these other reasons not, you know, you know that, that's not an excuse for me not to eat better, not to, to drink more water. In fact, I'll take a drink right now. And just in general, uh, these comments don't bother me. But... Yeah, I don't know what else, what, what kind of reaction people expect me to say. I'm not angry about it. I'm not proud of it, but, I mean, I am. I am fat. I've, I've been fat for a while. Might continue to be fat for a while, but we'll see. I'm working on it. Moving on. Uh, I put up a video this week talking about if the Switch should replace the 3DS, and Sage Roy had this to say. Yeah, sure. Nintendo should drop their biggest moneymaker and focus on making games for a console that's always short in stock. Why can't the two systems coexist like the Nintendo 64 and the Game Boy, the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance, the Wii and the DS? On another note, quit begging for every game to come to a system that just learned how to walk. So, obviously I, I can't say much about the Switch being short in stock. Obviously this past week, there's more and more stock, there's even more stock available today. That's great, I, whatever. I, I can't do anything about the stock situation. Uh, but the reason, the, the reason the systems, I'm not going to say they can't coexist. I'm saying they shouldn't coexist. My stance is that Nintendo has never been in a spot where they focus all of their game development on a single platform. They've always split it across two platforms. And that made sense at the time when you had a system that was underneath your TV and one you take with you. But here's the thing. The Switch is both. 
There's not a lot of tangible things that 3DS brings to the table that the Switch can't also do while having its own additional features. Now, obviously, you know, you can't dock a 3DS unless you buy a modded version, but, you know, you have 3D screens, it's got the dual screen thing. That's something the Switch doesn't do. But a lot of the uses of the touch screen and the dual screen stuff aren't things that can't be done on a single screen. In fact, we've seen phone games that have done many similar things that the dual screen stuff for the 3DS and DS line has done. And the glasses free 3D is cool. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not cool. And if you really, really love that feature, no, Switch does not replace that. So I get it. But I think for a while it'll exist as Nintendo starts to cut prices of 3DS, gets the 2DS XL prices down, and they start to focus it more on a younger generation where this is the system you buy for your kids to introduce them to Nintendo before they upgrade to the Switch. Uh, and I think that's a logical play for Nintendo. But... In general, I want Nintendo's best foot moving forward on the Switch. Not just because I own one, but because I think it's best for the company. If you look at... I'm going to bring up PlayStation because they've been the most consistently successful company in the video game industry uh, since they came in. Even more consistently successful than Nintendo, at least on the home console side. And, you know, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 have all been wildly successful systems. And that's because Sony is so focused on one platform. Now they did have the PSP which sold 80 million and that's fantastic. They did have the PS Vita but you notice how quickly they dropped out of the PS Vita race and stopped trying to compete with the 3DS. And that wasn't just because they were getting spanked, it's because their stuff just wasn't selling and PlayStation is at their best when they focus all of their efforts on a single platform. And we've never seen Nintendo do that and now they have a platform that is portable and for your TV. It only makes sense now for Nintendo to dive into that. Now for some people who commented about they should keep doing it as long as the 3DS is making more money than the Switch or making money. 3DS is going to make money as long as Nintendo continues to sell it. But the Switch has already outsold the 3DS so far this fiscal year. Uh, it hasn't sold as much software as the 3DS, but it also doesn't have as much software available for it yet. Again, a problem that's helped alleviate it if Nintendo focused all of their efforts on Switch. And obviously focusing all of their efforts on Switch would eliminate a lot of the concerns people might have for game gaps. Uh, and now that Nintendo's primary handheld you know ip out there pokemon is having a full rpg coming to the switch we're starting to run out of excuses for them not to do this uh, and for people who feel this way i actually pose this question to you why do you want nintendo to not focus solely on the switch is it because you don't have one is it because you don't plan to get one and you just want to rock your 3ds uh is it because you don't have the money i you know i'm actually curious what the reasons could be uh, because a lot of things, you know, just like when the 3DS came out, you could maybe you couldn't afford it that year, but wait a few years and pick it up. Same with the Switch. Uh, and more software on the Switch makes it a more enticing platform. Uh, 3DS has had a good run. It's not like I'm throwing the 3DS in the trash. It's had a good run. It has a ton of good games and it has a huge library already. So, yeah, I just think it's time for the Switch to take over. Uh, moving on. Uh, we had Switch Bendgate come up again, and I realize people hate that name, but basically Switch is bending uh, either due to physical abuse, heat, manufacturing issues, whatever the case may be. And we talked about this many months ago, and it was brought up again because Kotaku found out that people in Japan are seeing it happen, and people as recently as like last week were, were reporting on their Switches being bent. Um, and what's interesting about this is that, oh man... People, whoever picked up these comments for me must really hate me this week. Uh, so Broello had this to say, Stop copying Review Tech USA, you PC-looking butt. Um, man. So let me address this. And I think a later comment here might, might have something to do with this as well. Review Tech USA does a very similar thing to I do. They, they talk about... They have news, they give their opinions on the news, and they talk about gaming, they throw up still images or gameplay or what have you. They're not always on camera. Sometimes they're on camera, sometimes they're not on camera. Uh, Rich is a guy that I actually respect on YouTube. I don't think he's perfect. I think he's made mistakes in the past. Um, he has uh, a way of, of delivering stuff that I don't necessarily agree with, like when he does some of his um, insulting kind of voices uh I'm, I'm not really into that but i obviously see his content and yes i saw his video you know in this case on switch bengate as well as like two or three other videos before my video even went up and i don't really i guess 
in, in this industry of YouTube, you're going to see multiple YouTubers report on the same thing because we have different audiences. While there is audience crossover, you know, obviously, I watch a bunch of different channels that all reported on it, so I'm crossed over with their with those different channels and with their audiences. A lot of times, there's not crossover as well, and we have plenty of people who follow our channel who don't even know who Review Tech USA is, or if they do, they don't like him and they don't follow his channel. Uh, obviously, he's been way more successful at this than I have, and he's been at it for a lot more years than I have. But yeah, I, I mean. We have a very similar style to what we do in terms of how we deliver it, but I, I mean, he, he his channel and several others are kind of an inspiration for me on my channel. I'm not gonna shy away from that fact. Uh, I don't really view it as copying because like he he covers. I mean, his the name of his channel is Review Tech. He covers tech. He's a tech enthusiast. Video games are obviously a big part of tech. He covers a lot of video game stories. I'm just Nintendo. I just talk about Nintendo. And plus, I do get on camera, and I do have a video podcast, and I do do things. And I want to be on camera more often once I have the money to afford the proper technology. But, uh, you know, we has the technology. <laughs> but, yeah, I you know, it's cool if you don't like seeing the video pop up twice in different feeds. I can't tell you then to don't follow him or stop following us or don't follow anyone else. I think this is just the nature of the way things work. I mean... I used to work at Zelda Informer, and we would report report on a piece of news that uh, was reported on by Nintendo Everything, Go Nintendo, IGN, Kotaku, uh, GameSpot, GameStop, whatever. So many different places. But yeah, I don't really have an issue with, with Rich or anyone else, and I, I doubt they have an issue with me. But yeah, obviously we all take inspiration from each other. Hopefully you, you feel like my thoughts on things are at least my own, because they are. They're not based on anybody else's thoughts. Moving on, uh, our least viewed video this week was about Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, uh, and I'm not sure why it was the least viewed, but it was the one that brought up some of the most interesting discussion points for me. And Isolex responded by saying, "This video is more just your opinion and not news." And again, this gets back to me talking about what my channel does. Yes, I report on news. Yes, I have discussion videos. Yes, I have top tens. Yes, I do live streams. Yes, I do a lot of stuff. I even do product reviews and maybe eventually game reviews uh, once I get up to a point where I'm confident enough that I can edit footage together and not worry about copyright strikes. That's all great. But the important part in all of this is that I view this channel as not being your IGNs or your Game Explains or your Switch Force or all these other channels that might just give you a quick one minute to 90 second video that just says, here's the news, do with it what you want. And I think it's important that those channels and those avenues exist. I think it's important in print media. I think it's important in video media. And there's even people like uh, Spawnwave, they'll do like a daily news recap of the news from the previous day and they'll hit on some topics and sometimes he'll discuss his opinion on it. Sometimes he'll just deliver the news and that's fine. Those outlets are perfect for what they do. That's not what we do at Nintendo Prime. We present you the news and then I create a discussion off of the news. Because to me, this channel's main objective is to bring Nintendo fans together to have honest conversations about whatever topics we happen to be talking about. In this case, I was talking about Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I led with the news. I reported it. That is the primary reason to check it out. I didn't say come here to see my opinions on Pokemon. I said come here to see this news. They got the news, and if you didn't want anything else, you could just stop watching the video after the first few minutes, and you're good. You got the news. You're done. You're informed. Great. I'm glad I was able to inform you. But I also like to build a conversation off that, which means whatever comes to my mind as I'm going over that news, I'm going to talk about. And in this case, it was about my love or lack of love of the Pokemon series and why. And I understand some people uh, didn't agree with my reasons as to why. And that's fine because my reasons are my own. Like why I don't enjoy something is very, very personal. And as I explained, I reported on it because Pokemon's a big deal. And I'm going to be po playing Pokemon on Switch and making tons of videos about me playing Pokemon on Switch. So I know that I'm literally a couple years away from just Pokemon going crazy. And like I have, you know, my favorite Pokemon uh, is back there, Charizard. I, I love Pokemon. Like, I, it's not like I dislike it. I fell out of love with the gaming series. I actually still love the anime. 
And I just, I'm having a hard time getting back in. And yes, I said maybe it's too complex and all this other stuff. Uh, but maybe I, when I finally sit down and give Pokemon a real chance again, strip away all my biases against why I fell out of love with it ages ago and give it a try from a fresh perspective, maybe I'll find I love all the new mechanics. I might. I, I really might. But right now, I can't get my mind wrapped around even giving these mechanics a, a chance. Like the idea that you hatch Pokemon just hurts my brain. Not because it's difficult to understand, because I just don't, I never viewed that as part of Pokemon. Uh, so, again, I will get over it someday. And I, I, at our channel, again, it's a lot of my opinion because that's what, it's an opinion channel. Let's just call it what it is. We have news, we have discussions, but everything's opinion based. So, moving on. We introduced a brand new Ocarina of Time glitch this week. And it's crazy 19 years later that happened. And The Legend 34 had this to say. Too long of a video without explaining the point. And I think that's more so to do with the title of the video where I said uh, this new Ocarina of Time glitch is game changing. And I might have jumped the gun by saying game changing because the impact of this glitch isn't fully known. So when people were expecting me to go into deeper uh, explanation as to why it's game changing and, and what in what ways in the speedrunning community is it game changing, I couldn't give you those details because they don't exist yet. Just in my brain, uh, thinking as someone who has played a lot of Ocarina of Time and watched a lot of Zelda speedruns and covered a lot of Zelda speedruns over the year, I can think of ways and experimentations with being able to use any item, whether you're a child or adult, and how it might impact speedruns that allow for glitches. Obviously, glitchless speedruns this is irrelevant for, but for speedruns that allow for glitches, not any percent because you're going to skip everything anyways, but... Just like glitchless, like like gl like one hundred percent runs that allow for glitches, or all dungeon runs that allow for glitches, or you know whatever the ca whatever type of run. There's like eleven different speed run categories for Ocarina of Time, and I feel like this could potentially impact four or five of those. And for those runs, I think it will be game changing. But how exactly it's game changing can't be known yet because speedrunners are still taking this glitch, dissecting it, and perfecting it, and trying to see. Uh, in what ways it could help shave time, if it shaves time at all. And it's going to take a lot of experimenting and hundreds and hundreds of hours of practice before we see how game-changing this is. And maybe it turns out that the glitch uh, isn't worth it. You know, isn't worth the time it takes to pull it off uh, since you have to do, do it for every single item. And that's fine. I understand that. But we have to sit back and think that I think the potential for it to be game-changing is there. So I apologize if the title was was a bit misleading. I should have said potentially game changing and potentially game changing in that it could speed up getting through dungeons. I could make certain uh, bosses and enemies easier because you can use items across. Like the Kokiri Sword does like the same damage as the Ma or the Kokiri Sword. The uh, Deku Sticks do the same amount of damage as the Master Sword and all that stuff. So uh, again, I, I apologize if it wasn't informational enough. The information really isn't out there yet, and I probably should have framed that in context with what what I was talking about with the glitch. So I apologize. I wasn't as straightforward as I should have been, and the title probably should have been a slightly different uh, since we don't know how game-changing it is yet. I just, in my brain, I just kept thinking, man, this is going to be huge. Uh, yeah, so, moving on. So, we end of the week with our top 10 critically acclaimed Nintendo games. It's not really our top 10. It's top the top 10 according to Metacritic and uh, game rankings kind of smashed together and figuring out what are the best rated games critically of all time. Uh, and Sierra Dobson had this to say, love the video, but I think some background music would make it flow better. And the voice you use when you transition to the next game and number is kind of funny, LOL. But I love your videos. Keep it up. Finally, a positive comment. Oh, it's good. There's plenty of positive comments this week. Uh, I wanted to end on a positive note with this comment here. I, I think you are correct. I, I do need to start thinking about adding background music to a lot of these videos that are long and just have me talking and it might be something i feel like i need to even add to this video uh so you're correct that, that's a very good criticism a very good constructive one thank you so much i will try my best to find fitting music uh that goes along with my voice as for you know finding it funny the way i don't know that just kind of happened on the spot when i'm like number nine skyward sword like, I don't even know where that voice comes from. I just, I was reading my script, and as I'm voicing it, I'm like, it just felt like this, like, epic, deep, number 10. 
I, I, I don't really get where it comes from. Um, I have a lot of crazy voices that happen like that sometimes. Uh, and you they really only come out when I'm reading scripts. I used to, fun fact, I used to be like a actor, kind of. I used to be in like school musicals and plays and all this stuff. Even after I got out of high school, I was in a couple local plays uh, in Our Town and Logarithms. Uh, I was the Scarecrow and the Wiz. I was Jesus and Godspell. Um, so I had like this acting thing in me. So uh, sometimes you have to change the tone of your voice uh, to fit the script or, you know, deepen your voice or raise your voice or do different types of voices and different types of slang, uh, different accents. And I, I don't even think I can pull off any of the accents I used to do anymore because I'm way out of practice, like 10 years out of practice. But uh, it's still fun. It's still something I enjoy. And sometimes that comes out in my voice work out the channel. Uh, yeah. And, and I wanted to mention, this has been sitting here this whole time. This is uh, ceramic metal. I'm not 100 sure. I know it's steel on the inside. Uh, this is a new piece of merchandise here at Nintendo Prime. It's got our, our, our new logo with the Nintendo Prime red and blue. Uh, I wanted to mention that we now have these available for anyone who wants them. I can't remember the exact pricing, but you can find the details for it. Down in the description below, I have a link to, for you to be able to purchase it. And as always, it's another way to support Nintendo Prime. You purchase this mug, and it helps support us here. I get a small percentage, and you get a product. So that's, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. Man, I also want to give a shout out to Ricardo Graphics. Uh, he didn't design the bomb. That was actually designed by someone, an old friend of mine named Trey from the Zelda Informer days. But he added the flames to it and the Nintendo Prime stuff on here. He made it what I view is a printable version of itself. He HD'd the logo. And uh, I want to give a shout out to him because he did this all for free. Uh, but he's a, a professional. At least I, he looks like a professional to me. Let's put it that way. He has done several professional work before. So if you're someone out there that's looking for a professional logo kind of work or something... Why don't you check him out? And I'll have a link down to his YouTube stuff and his Facebook and wherever, whatever other contact information he gave if you would like to contact him for work for your channel or other things. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robodance from the Tender Prime. Mm. Really trying to get used to drinking more water. Woo! Subscribe, like this video, dislike it if you disliked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.